Before our show began tonight, I had the chance to speak with Arkansas Congressman Rick Crawford, who serves on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to have you here and appreciate your carving out time. I know you don't get a lot of time at home, so this uh, really means a lot. I want to get right to the memo. You're on that committee. They released it yes, today. I, I'm stunned, first, by the contents of the memo that affirms what many of us had thought and feared, and that is at the highest levels of government, there was an attempt to influence the election. But equally stunning to me is the reaction from many on the left that act like this is no big deal. Congressman, why is this, in your mind, a big deal? Well, what this does, Governor, is this, this verifies and validates the theory that, in fact, there was collusion to alter the outcome of the election. Unfortunately, it wasn't the Russians that were doing it. It was a cabal of uh, politically minded um, officials at the very highest level that thought that they could uh, impact the election. Now, look, it didn't turn out the way they wanted. And I think after election night, they panicked. And when people panic, they tend to make mistakes and bad things happen. And so I, I think the idea was that, hey, Hillary's going to be president, so nobody will ever know this. And it turns out that, in fact, we do know it. And if you change the names or just totally redacted everything and any regular person viewed this, they would be appalled. But because it's dealing with President Trump, and in their minds, he's a repugnant individual. He's not, he's not deserving of their consideration as it applies to protections of the Constitution or anyone associated with him is not deserving of that protection. Therefore, we're going to convict him in the court of public opinion, anyone that has any association with him. And it's, oops, maybe it's not that way after all. Congressman, you were on the committee when you first started getting information and you asked a lot of questions mm -hmm. uh, behind closed doors and in secrecy to get to this information. One of the things that became very clear that there was um, an attempt to not tell the FISA court all of the information regarding uh, this dossier, where it came from, who paid for it. Uh, were, were you shocked when you first started seeing the information? And was there any reaction of shock on the part of the Democrats on your committee? Well, I think probably privately and, and to themselves, they must have been shocked. I don't know how anybody could look at this and not be shocked. As I said, if you just took the names out of it and looked at the, the, the procedural flaws here, and, and then you could say, something's not right. This shouldn't have happened this way. So if, if we haven't done anything else, we've exposed uh, maybe the weaknesses in the FISA court uh, procedural system that would allow for the compromise of constitutional protections of a U.S. person. Now, now you can enter the names and start to say, well, um, here are the, the principles. And um, now we're starting to see a different narrative because, well, he was associated with Trump, so he's automatically a bad guy. So we'll go ahead and let this slide. Look, I don't care how repugnant you may find anyone. They're a U.S. citizen. They're entitled to, to due process and consideration under the law. And they shouldn't, this, should, this kind of abuse shouldn't be going on. Um, but now that we know this has gone on, now we've got to take the appropriate action. And, and there, there's people that have to be held to account. How will they be held to account? And what's the appropriate action? What'll, what will happen from here? Let me kind of give you a little bit of the timeline. This memo is the result of months and months of investigative work. And it was not easy. And the reason it wasn't easy is because the DOJ and FBI, at first request, going back to March, didn't want to release any information. We requested it. They didn't want to release it. We Multiple times, they didn't want to release the information. Ultimately, we had to subpoena the documents. And even after that, DOJ officials then decided it would be the best thing if they visited Speaker Ryan and did an end run around the requesting committee, the Intelligence Committee, and try to talk the Speaker out of um, you know, forcing the issue. And, and so credit where credit's due. Speaker Ryan, uh, he is a, a, a respecter of the committee, and uh, not only this committee, but all committees. He has a high degree of respect for committee chairmen and the work that they do and the work that the staff does. And so he was uh, committed to that, and he said, no, if they've requested it, you're going to need to go on ahead and submit it. So this was not an easy extraction of that information, number one. Number two, um, I mentioned that this first request was made in March. Robert Mueller's appointment didn't come till May. So those folks who are saying, well, this is just a distraction uh, against the uh, special uh, investigation that Robert Mueller is 
uh, conducting. You can see the timeline proves that's false. This predates him by two or three months. And so we're not trying to do anything except um, expose what we think has been some bad acting at the highest levels. And let me say, too, to clarify, the FBI and the DOJ, they are full of uh, hardworking, law-abiding, patriotic, diligent um, law enforcement officials. What we've done here is identify two or three or four. Unfortunately, they're at the very high levels, uh, and they've indicated a very sharp political bias and are willing to act on it. The Democrats say, well, this isn't a full report. There's a lot more information. The Republicans only s selectively released information. What is it they have that needs to be released that we all need to see that was not seen by your memo? Well, Governor, I'm going to tell you, you'll probably get a chance to see that because we voted and Chairman Nunes actually introduced uh, the motion, made the motion to allow for the Democrats' memo to be released to the House, to the full House for their review. That's going to take place over a period of a few days, and then it will be reviewed by DOJ and FBI to make sure that it's not revealing sources and methods or compromising national security. And if it's cleared, they'll have the opportunity for that memo to become public, and you can contrast that against ours and, and make that uh, assessment on your own. But I don't think there's anything in our memo that's not factually accurate. And had it been, uh, Director Ray would have corrected it um, two or three days ago. You know, Congressman, I appreciate your service on this committee. Uh, this is painful to watch as an American citizen to see the Fourth Amendment virtually trampled by the highest levels of law enforcement in our country. And I hope that you and all the members of your committee will continue to be relentless in getting to the bottom of it and holding people accountable because I know this, you and I would be held accountable if we lied to the FBI. If they lie to us, Absolutely. they need to be held accountable too. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you.